Right guys, the good news regarding the iPhone SE 4 continues because we have another source telling us the SE could be based on the mini form factor instead, and so let's delve into it. So yes, recently I delved into a leak suggesting the SE 4 might actually be based on the iPhone 13 mini and not the 10R, like of course John Prosser told us. And this was fantastic news because I'm sure many miss the mini from the flagship series and so reusing that design for the SE makes sense since price was the biggest issue, that's why it flopped. And so of course, this now being $450 would sell like hotcakes. And why I think this is because the refurbished iPhone 12 mini at that price sold out within a day, so yes, people want small iPhones but they don't want to pay a high price and so that's why the SE Mini's perfect. So yes, we have a new source confirming just this. They say the next generation SE is going to be based on the Mini series, but there's going to be a single camera on the back, no Face ID support, and instead we're going to see Touch ID on the sides. Now those downgrades do make sense because at the end of the day, Apple wants to upsell you to the higher end models, and so there has to be worse features. And so for example, having a single camera on the back makes sense because A, most SE can consumers just want the basics, but also B, for those who do want other lenses, they're gonna have to go for the higher end models. And in fact, I would not be surprised if they do downgrade the sensor itself, and the main lens is based on the SE3, which of course is from the iPhone XR, so yeah, that again is gonna be a major downgrade over the higher end models, and that makes sense. However, I would argue this is not bad news as such because Apple reducing the camera components inside this could allow for a bigger battery and that was one of the bigger issues with the mini series. The battery life just wasn't great and so improving that with the SE even with the camera downgrades would be appreciated. Anyways, Touch ID also makes sense because obviously Apple with the iPad lineup does have a distinction where the Pros have Face ID but the regular models don't and so Apple's doing the same with the SE where this has Touch ID but of course the higher end models get the better Face ID instead. Then again, there are some consumers who actually prefer Touch ID so again for that demographic, offering a modern SE with Touch ID on the sides does make sense. And yeah, since the Touch ID power button does already exist, I can see Apple easily implementing this with the SE4. I do wonder what's going to happen to the notch though because Apple definitely is not going to give us a notchless design on this. This has to look inferior so with the iPhone 15 series getting Dynamic Island I'm sure this iPhone is going to retain the notch but I guess the notch won't be housing much apart from the FaceTime camera. Though maybe they bring the earpiece back down into the notch. Now as for other upgrades to expect, I'm expecting a new chip of course, but it likely won't be the flagship chip like SEs in the past, since now the regular models don't even get that, and so considering the regular 15 should get the A16 chip, I think the SE4 is also going to get that. And by the way, I don't see more RAM coming to the SE, I think 6 gigs is going to remain exclusive to the higher end models. And colours I also think won't be coming down to the SE because... I can see that also being a selling point for the higher end iPhone models so Apple offering the basic colours with the SE like they've always done makes sense. Oh by the way, millimeter wave 5G I do see coming to the SE4 because it does now have the flat sides and a design that can accommodate millimeter wave 5G bands and so yes you can now get super fast 5G in the US with the SE4 refresh. But that and the new designs are most likely going to increase the price. I'm expecting this to be $450. And to be fair, that's still a very good deal for what this phone offers. But yeah, it is going to be a price increase over existing iPhone SE models. By the way, I could also see Apple downgrading the screen on this. Maybe they want to reserve OLED for the higher end models and so they could swap out the OLED panel on this for an LCD panel instead. And yeah, that's not great, but then again, Apple's LCD panels are pretty solid. Anyways, let's delve into your comments. So Aurora says SE4 must have Touch ID and OLED and a headphone jack if possible. Now Touch ID and OLED I could see materialize, but I don't see Apple ever giving us back the jack on iPhones. We're fully into wireless now with AirPods. They make way more money for Apple and ultimately apart from a few budget Android phones, most smartphones have moved on and has completely got rid of the jack, so yes, I doubt we're going to see it. I mean, do remember it's going to be nearly a decade since Apple removed the jack and they've yet to reverse it with any iPhone, so yes, it's a permanent change. 
So David444 says, a 10 slash 10s design would be better than this actually has been hinted at by Ross Young because he said, we could see a 5.7 inch LCD panel for the SE4 and that is very similar to the 5.8 inch OLED we saw with the 10 and 10s. And so theoretically I can see Apple retaining that body but of course with thicker bezels on the front and LCD instead. But as I said this design's been out of circulation for years and so I doubt it's going to make any financial sense to revive this design for the SE4 when of course they can just reuse the 13 mini shells that are already in production. So Opus Digital Audio says the 10R body makes sense, after that the 10 will be next, followed by the mini. And I personally doubt that, like I've said in the past, the SE being based on both the 10R and the 10 does not make sense because those phones have been out of circulation for years, Apple has stopped producing them and of course, at the end of the day the SE is a recycle bin device, Apple just combines parts they already produce, and so I do think it's going to be the 13 mini and I'm praying that's the case because that design would be perfect. So Daniel theorizes that maybe the SE4 is going to launch in 2023 instead, because Apple did kill the 12 mini that was supposed to be 499, and so that could be a hint they're making another budget iPhone. And personally, I don't think that's going to be the case, because the 13 mini does exist, and I do think Apple's going to wait for that to move down the range, so that they can replace that with the SE4 and of course, have one mini iPhone in the range. Because I don't think Apple wants two mini sized iPhones in the range, and so I do still think it's going to be a 2024 release. And as I've said in previous videos, Apple killing off the 12 mini was due to production ending for it, if it still had continued, I'm sure Apple would have kept it. Anyways, tell me your thoughts regarding this report in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching guys, make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumours. Check out the video in the card above on details regarding the iPhone 15 series and on that note, see ya peeps.